Hello, welcome to another episode of Mustard Chooses. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. What are the differences, the pros and cons, between dog sledding or bike mushing? Well, in today's episode, I'll, I'll talk about that, so stay tuned. So here we are, it's just a couple of days after Thanksgiving, and after having a really great holiday, I am impatiently waiting for snow to come. Typically at Thanksgiving, I've gotten several days of dog sledding in. This year, the only day we had snow was Halloween, and I got the sled out on Halloween, but since then, the snow melted, and we've been bike mushing. So this time of year, I'm really ready to start sledding. So in today's episode, we're going to compare the mountain bike for bike mushing and my dog sled for dog sledding and as I'm talking I see the bandit is over my shoulder in the window here kind of watching the production so um, I hope he's not too distracting the first biggest difference really between the two I think has to do with simplicity when I'm talking about simplicity I'm talking about if you look at the dog sled there's literally no moving parts. We have the basket, we have the handle, we have the bow, we have the runners, but there's no moving parts. Whereas the bicycle is entirely moving parts from the wheels, the spokes, the derailleur, the handlebars, the cables, the brakes. There are a million moving parts here. The bike just seems to be so needy that it almost kind of distracts you sometime from the dogs themselves. Whereas the sled is simplicity um, by design. There's nothing moving on it. You stand on the runners, the dogs pull. Um, the, the sled kind of takes care of itself. So if you're comparing the simplicity of design between the bike and the dog sled, the dog sled wins hands down. All right, the second comparison I'm going to make between the bike and the dog sled is rideability start with the sled. So rideability with the sled. You stand on the runners, you hold on to the handlebar, and the dogs pull. As they pull, if they need an assist or an encouragement, you know, you're part of the team too, and so you can kick along. Usually I stand on one runner and I'll kick, and I can always get my, my balance again right here. As I'm going down a hill, I can kind of get down low, I can drag my heels. Rideability is really easy because I'm standing on the sled I'm literally maybe a quarter inch off of the snow, and it's very easy for me to kind of maintain my balance. It's like skiing. I even have a handlebar to kind of hold on to. Um, if I have to get off really quick for whatever reason, I can step off. So that's the rideability on the dog sled. On the mountain bike, <clears throat> when I'm bike joring, obviously I'm riding the bicycle. And so here I am, I have this machine that's between my two legs. If I have to get off, it's awkward because I have to either jump off or step off or let the bike drop. Um, obviously as you're riding it, you're balancing on the seat, you're balancing on two wheels, you're standing on the pedals. If I need to, if I need to brake, obviously I use my, my hand brakes, but you're higher up and you're less stable on the bicycle and in terms of getting off, it's a lot more complicated. Um, than getting off quickly, but just stepping off of the sled. So when it comes to rideability, again, the dog sled, I think, wins it hands down over the mountain bike. All right, next we're gonna talk about control. This time we're gonna start with the mountain bike. So to control the mountain bike, obviously, it's really easy to steer because I have my handlebar and my steering wheel. So as the dogs are pulling the bike, uh, I have a lot of control over where the bike itself goes. I can steer it around objects almost, um, well, with very high precision. Um, anyone who's ridden a bike before, you know this. So it's very easy to steer. It's very easy to control that way. In terms of braking, I have my, my brakes. And as long as they're in good shape, they um, can slow the bike down and they can also stop the bike. 
So uh, in terms of controllability, it's pretty good. Controlling the dog sled, steering the dog sled really kind of requires leaning. And so obviously my handlebars here on the sled do not move and they do not control the runners. So in order to kind of steer the sled as the dogs are pulling it one way or the other, or as we're going down a hill or a slope, you have to kind of lean and kind of flex, <laughs> actually kind of flex the sled. It's not very precise. It's a sliding object. Um, sometimes even to kind of uh, to take a turn, you'll drag one foot and kind of pivot around on that. So steering it um, takes a little bit more practice, a little bit more skill, and a little bit more luck, and is really dependent upon the surface that you're on um, than the bike. So steering's a little bit more difficult with the sled. Um, the one thing that I think really does work where they're the similar is in terms of braking. So for braking, the sled, you have a couple of things. There's one thing you can do to brake is you can actually drag your foot and slow down that way. We we'll also have, if you look right here, that's the claw brake. The claw brake is um, just a metal claw. I can step down on this and actually drag this in the snow. I can even put both feet down on it if I have to. This works really well for slowing the bike, um, the sled down. Um, <clears throat> and so in terms of control, it's kind of probably the bike wins in terms of steering, but in terms of braking, I think that the dog sled wins because I have more different ways to kind of brake when I'm sledding. The biggest difference that the sled has over the bicycle is that when you stop to hold the dogs is I have a snow hook. So there's my snow hook in the, in the holster there. I can set this, step on this, and you'll be amazed at how well this holds in the snow. And when it, once it's held, the dogs can't pull it. The bike has no such brake. Uh, so when, the, when I need to anchor the bicycle when I'm stopping, I just put it down on the ground. I hope the dogs don't drag it. Fortunately, they've learned not to, but it's something that I really miss. I don't have the ability to anchor the bicycle that I do with a sled. Now I'm going to talk about connectivity. So this is how the dogs actually connect to the bike or to the sled. This time we'll start off with the bike. So this is the part that a lot of people wonder about. If you have not gone bike joring before, I prefer to say bike mushing because when I say bike joring, people don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but when you're bike mushing, um, people often wonder, how do you connect the dogs? So the way you connect the dogs is you have a gang line, which is a simple line. Uh, you're going to see, uh, we use this for sledding too. And then attached to the gang line, you have your tug lines. So this tug line, each tug line goes to one of the dogs, to their harness. And then to attach the dogs to their collar, I use a neckline. So they're attached in the front. So we have the neckline, the tug lines, going to the gang line. And to attach the gang line to the bike, this is the tricky part. You can buy various devices, but the dangerous thing here is that this gang line coming to the bicycle can easily get caught in the front tire. And if it gets caught in the tire, you're going to go head over heels, uh, wiped out, as this goes up into the bike and stops the front end of the bike while the back end of the bike is still going. So regardless, is you need some sort of a device that will attempt to keep the gang line from getting caught up in the tire. You can buy these wands and these arms, you can pay for those. I have a little do-it-yourself thing. So I basically run my gang line through a piece of PVC cord, and you can see that I clip it. I just have this rope tied around the front end of um, the bike. I can unclip it. And this is the whole unit right here. So this PVC helps to keep the, the line from getting slack and getting caught in the tire. And of course, as you're driving, you have to kind of do what you can to keep it from getting caught too. Pretty simple, but I will tell you, learning to use this takes a lot of practice and it can be kind of scary. To attach the gang line to the sled is a little different. I have this tied back right now. So let me guess, kind of take this off. So here's the same gang line or it's a different gang line, but same thing. I have my neck line here for the front collar of the dogs. 
I have the two tugs for their two um, for their harnesses, and then I have my gang line going to my sled. You'll see here I've got a bungee cord because you don't want um, a static cord that's going to shock the dogs. It's a it's a bungee cord inside of the gang line for the bike as well. This attaches to the bridle, and so the bridle is attached to the frame of the sled. You don't want to have it attached to the um, to the runners because it could pull the runners off. But uh, it's basically the same device. So we have a gang line, the tug lines, the neck lines. What's a little easier here is again I don't have any moving parts. If you're riding up too quick, you can ride over your line, and that can kind of jerk the sled around. But it's not the same issue of it getting caught up in the front tire of the bicycle. So connectivity, they connect the same way, but to be completely honest with you, bike joring is definitely more hazardous in terms of the dangers of running over your gang line. So when it comes to carrying things, I may need to carry dog food or water or extra clothing for myself or a map or um, I also carry my, um, my, my micro spikes for my boots in case I come to sli uh, slippery terrain. There's all kinds of, I might carry an extra jacket, I might even carry a sleeping bag. And in order to carry things on the sled, I have my sled bag. And so the sled bag is really awesome. Here's water in here. Um, some more water, my micro spikes. So the sled bag is ideal. It's really easy to carry a lot of stuff in here and it's right in there in the sled. To carry all the same objects on the bike, I don't have that. I have a rack on the back but it couldn't hold as much. It would just make the, the bike more unstable really. And so I need a backpack. So I carry a backpack. All this is on my back. And of course, the big difference here is when you're biking, the weather tends to be warmer. You're kind of riding on the bike, you tend to work up a sweat, you have this heavy backpack on your back and you're kind of sweating against that. The beauty of the sled is that it's cooler, you tend to not be so warm anyway, and everything is in the sled bag. So carrying capacity, the sled wins hands down. To transport and load my dogs and my mountain bike, I use a Subaru Outback. I have a bike rack that fits to the hatchback in the back and I can load the bike on it and I can take it off relatively easy enough. Um, it's a little bit of a chore but it's not that hard. The biggest problem I have with transporting my bike in this system is that the, my bike rack is fairly heavy and because of the bike rack I cannot keep the hatchback up by itself and I have to prop it up with a ski pole and so I need to do this before I load the dogs and then once the dogs are in put the bike in um, put the bike on the rack. The sled however is a little easier. The sled I can actually tie onto the roof rack on top of the vehicle. I just slide it up there. I always make a point to uh, orient it backwards so that the the runners are out over the windshield and what this allows me to do is I can easily open up the hatchback and it holds itself up. Um, without without any necessary props. So this is better for loading. In terms of trails, it's pretty much a wash because a lot of the trails, the forest trails that I use when I'm bike mushing are the same trails that I use when I'm dog sledding. The one advantage that the dog sledding has is that in the winter the lakes and the rivers freeze over. So now all of a sudden I have all this extra terrain that I can go across on the open ice that I just can't do on the bike. So there's one other plus for dog sledding. The reality is that this is purely an opinion piece, but I think dog sledding is much more fun. Dog sledding is dramatic, it's exciting. You're out in the winter time, I mean the winter and the snow is just a more um, dramatic time to be outside. There's fewer people on the trail. Uh, it's just, it, it fits this aesthetic that you're dog sledding and you're out in the snow. Um, bike mushing is great because it, it allows you to do stuff all year round with your dogs. It's a lot of fun. It keeps them in shape. The dogs enjoy it. Um, it it's certainly kind of different uh, and it's unique, but 
dog sledding is really, let's face it, that's why we get dog sleds. So the sledding wins when it comes to fun. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I like talking about dog sledding and bike mushing. I'm really ready for the snow to come and really get put the bike away and get the sled out for a few months. Um, I realize that a lot of my viewers live in areas where you don't have snow. And I also am certain that the majority of my viewers probably have bicycles and don't have dog sleds. Whatever it takes to get yourself out there recreating with your dogs, hey, start off with bike mushing. If it gets you excited, get a dog sled. But either both are really fun, they're enjoyable, they're exciting, and if you subscribe to this channel, you can learn all about what to do with both. So, again, thanks for watching, um, and I look forward to seeing you on the trail and on the next episode of Massachusetts.